This recalling of the era of Terra Earth's darkest hours when chimeras, half human, half animals, were created, is brought to you by first hand report from Ninhursag, whom I personally met with and had the drama explained to me in person what really took place in the land of Eden. Dates and many race names below were extrapolated through other sources, but the events came to this writer directly. While some of this may be missing, certain details are mistranslated by subtle degree it is still considered the most authentic retelling of what actually took place available to the public today. In order to give you some frame of reference of how the Chimera drama unfolded, I have to give you an idea of why invader races are here in the first place, and who is responsible for making all these new and horrific creatures that were mostly wiped out during a universal Terra cleansing in ancient times. But make no mistake, many still remain and are still Island of Dr. Moreau, styled distorted creations. Every physical body today is considered a chimera, a creation not formally authorized through treaty by the ruling bodies of avatar development within the cosmos. The conflict you have been a part of, in some cases for as long as human history itself, has been an emotionally devastating trial by fire on anyone's list of tempestuous journeys. The Terra Earth human Elohim drama began 560 meters, m equals million, years ago. Then 10 meters years later your universally pristine development ground was destroyed and your evolution placed on hold for the coming 250 meters years before you could come back into manifest form again. The destruction of Terra Eartha, Earth, left all beings on this plane disembodied for an unthinkable amount of time. Here's what happened. The Human Elohim Project, originally known as the Terranius I Am One Project, was referred to as the Grand Experiment. The brainchild of the Orifim Elohim Eternal Gestalts, Blue Fur, Bipedal, Humanesque, Cat, Feline Race, from Polydor, Sirius B. The idea was rather simple really, to take five unique, human, DNA template Eternal Gestalt Elohim races, place them all together on one, island, if you will, and have them crossbreed with each other to ultimately create one, super race, of Elohim being thought that all the best characteristics of each of the five similar, but unique bloodlines. The five bloodlines of human Elohim these included, right finger ink black, blue sheen athletic Uniceti, African, right finger yellow Melchizedek, Asian, right finger red Brinua, Native American, right finger brown, Tanner Antrian, Latino, right finger white Habiru Aryan, Caucasian, all of these genetic templates had been developing across some 970 billion years since the creation of the highly unique Christos avatar template technology that would become known as Elohim or eternal gestalts that would allow a physical avatar to live eternally, have unlimited power to manifest creation using supernatural powers known as clair abilities, including mental telepathy, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, clairsentience and many others. They are also breatharian, meaning they didn't have to eat to get energy and have no reason to ever sleep. It was a glorious and benevolent plan to the makers of the new avatar model from Polydor, to be sure. However, the Anahazi Elohim took exception to this project simply because Elohim beings should never be given as broad of emotional swing as the new, super race, was engineered to have, at least according to them. They argued all Elohim creations should be limited to a very small range of emotions to protect all lifeforms around them, in case of getting too upset and then accidentally vaporizing an entire world by their unlimited clair powers of thought to manifestation abilities. When formal negotiations failed to result in the impassioned wishes of the Anahazi in their favor with the High Council of the Orifim, a small group decided on their own to stop the Human Elohim project themselves, and by force if necessary. They are known collectively as the Michaelub, Sons of Baal, Archangel Michael, Collective. The Sons of Baal Right Finger Renegade Group formed 570 meters years ago Right Finger White, Human features with wings right finger made up of Anahazi Elohim Eternal Gestalt's right finger headquarters, Lyra Aramantina, Sirius A right finger created by the Anahazi Yana's Eternal Gestalt's, 950 B years ago the Orifim went ahead with the project, ceding Habiru Aryan Whites to the landmass of the Pleiades roughly 10 meters years prior to their Terra Eartha grand experiment as what I take to be a test run. After that new avatar had borne out successfully, 560 meters years ago, the human Elohim began seeding into Terra, beginning with the Red Brinua to Lemuria, known at that time as Lumia, and Elania, known today as the first Atlantis, within the land of Eden. The other four variants would be added one at a time to the experiment over the coming years. The Anahazi were well aware of the Orifim's plans to go forward with the project on Terra, 
and began setting up a foundation to control the new humans through subjugation and rule some 6-7 meters years prior to that initial first seeding. Some 10 meters years into the Human Elohim project, the Anahazi had already prepared their armies to bring humans under their control by force. They had bioformed the Kepri scarab, vampire serpents and dinoids, race from Andromeda, known today as simply, the men in black, and even procured the help of the Budara Borgia retrovirus nanites, the Borg, or, black goo. However, it is my own contention that the Borgia had already infected the sons of Baal prior to arrival and systematically infected all the other ET races that entered into Terra's realm from the very outset. The creators of the Anahazi Elohim, the Anahazi Yana's eternal gestalts, appear to have assisted the sons of Baal in their siege of the human Elohim experiment. They are a lion-feline Elohim race called Lionids, Leonids who also created the Necromidans, Nephilim, Jehovah and Unaki and appear to remain the ultimate authority figurehead of all the living invader races. However, every actual fractal of prime creator involved with this siege ultimately answers to the Budara Borgia, the Borg. Retrovirus Nanites. The Borg are robots the size of a single molecule that can infect and take over living beings on an RNA level which commands the DNA, possession. They can also, hold hands, and take any shape or form, and function, they choose. They simply assemble themselves as your computer, or your car, whatever gives them greater control over people. It is my contention they had already infected the small group of Anahazi Elohim and Anahazi Yana's Elohim, and now they had infected the soldiers of the Anahazi hybrid army as well. All of which are known today as the, Fallen Angels. The Anunnaki when I use the word Anunnaki. I'm talking about a coalition of over 50 different Anunnaki hybrids constantly warring between themselves, while holding to the common Luciferian treaty of murdering and destroying all humans they are all bound to. Which is why wars are never ending. They each want total domination, and every single one of them wants all humans dead. This is not conjecture. While the original enslavement came to the human Elohim program through the Anahazi Elohim who brought to this plane the Budara Borgia retrovirus and the Scarab Kepri for that initial attack 550 meters years ago, most of the rest of the infiltration took place very recently when Enki Lucifer and Enlil showed up 798k years ago and began laying the foundation for the ultimate takeover of the world for their own lands. Both had to submit to biological atmospheric adaptation through the Jehovah Anunnaki DNA, and both were originally slightly different bloodlines of dragons. Out of those two, it was Enki and his son, daughter, Thoth the Atlantean, also known as Hermes Trismegistus and possibly thousands of other names by now, just as Enki is, who commissioned Ninhursag, a top-level geneticist, possibly originally from the Anahazi Yana's Elohim who were advanced geneticists, but her true provenance was never detailed to me during our talks, to engineer systems by which many dozens of ET animal species could enter Terra Earth's atmosphere. Ninhursag's job was to give bipedal bodies to more than 50 different species of creatures, now storied in mythology as half-human, half-creature chimeras as pictured in reliefs, frescoes and statue form all across ancient Egypt. Which she did, in parallel during the Adam and Eve drama, Something never disclosed in historic texts outside of the highly obfuscated reference to the great serpent that had, convinced Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge, thus damning all mothers to eternal hell in extremely difficult childbirth. The real story has nothing to do with an apple, but it has a lot to do with very ancient knowledge in regards to genetic engineering. If Eve is guilty of the original sin, which is a fictional term to discredit fractals of prime creator, as there is no such thing as sin to the creator of all things, but there is such thing as remaining balanced, or seeking a path of self-service. It would be the act of agreeing to create Enki and Thoth's Earthling and help them gain access to surface Earth's survival in this atmosphere and gravitational pressure. Because, as you will learn in the history of the Chimera PT2, Eve is just another name for Ninhursag, known as the mother of all life since recorded history, worldwide. She didn't create this plane, but she certainly did create the body you're in now. What took place in the garden wasn't just about, God, Ninhursag, creating Adam and Eve, but a massive, huge genetic program that would usher in the greatest battle of the chimeras against each other and against the bloodlines of both Adam, father of Abel and Seth, and Eve, 
who gave life to all speaking beings on plane today, imaginable. And all of these beings would be designed to bioform all actual human Elohim life into Ninhursag's own image. Which did happen, and yes, you are now standing in an avatar that is nothing like it was prior to this ambitious campaign, but a massively altered Chimera version which was designed to discontinue your eternal life Elohim form. First, let's look at the Adam and Eve drama, then later in PT2 we will look at the actual genealogy and timeline of that creation, known as the Hyksos. The real story of the creation of six-pointed star Adam and Eve in 250,000 BC Enki, along with son, daughter Thoth, approached Ninhursag as mentioned above, to commission her to create what they presented her as, a new earthling species. It was cast in an altruistic light to her, as being an avatar that would enable many of the, lost souls of Terra, to inhabit physical bodies again as it would include DNA from the Nephilim who had become disembodied and trapped within the simulation with no other way of escape. That they would become eternal slaves of the Leviathan and Anunnaki was conveniently not mentioned. Keep in mind, the passage you're familiar with about, the great deceiver, by the way, was written about Enki Lucifer, the serpent in the garden to start with. The lost souls of Terra, LSOT equals lost was a term to describe spirit essences who were killed in the original fall of man war that witnessed the destruction of all life forms on Terra 550 meters years ago in a war on the human Elohim project by the Anahazi Elohim who wanted to stop it from ever moving forward. And also includes many more beings that were destroyed in the countless wars that have followed over the previous 250 meters years since Terra was able to host life again. The Great War of the Fall of Man blew Terra into 13 pieces, sending 12 outside of the atmosphere that kept the simulation functioning, along with some of the DNA of all those beings. If even one cell of your blood is lost from the, video screen, of the hologram, you no longer have any way to manifest your avatar anymore. And without a physical body, there is no such thing as leaving this 15-level time matrix. Ever. This went for both the humans, as well as the multiple races that were bioformed by the Anahazi and used as soldiers to keep this project from taking place. All lives were lost. In light of the altruistic nature of the proposed project, she agreed to provide the genetic help to found the all-new Earthings that would ultimately become known in our history books first as, Neanderthal Man, but was known by the Anunnaki in Babylonian times as the Lulkist, where we get the term locusts today. The, gods, came to refer to the indentured servants as, Lulus, a nickname after the very first female of this new hybrid race ever born that Ninhursag had named Luluwa. Females are mothers that give life, thus the most important if you're making people. Formally, this new bloodline is known in modern times today as the Hyksos mentioned above. Here is a short video referencing to the original Earthlings being referred to as Lulus. Just bear in mind, Enki made certain they would never be able to ascend, by only giving the new species a nine-strand DNA template. In the Gaia time matrix, you must have twelve-strand DNA to ever leave this realm. From the outset he created the Psyop he was always working to provide a way of escape from their chains to give, his people, hope and to glorify himself as a, benevolent god. The word hope by the way, is a program to keep the suffering from suiciding out and the actions of Enki have been anything but benevolent since his, her arrival. Tree of Knowledge for Lulus of Enki Wes Penray The genetic splicing for the original version of the Lulus, they would be upgraded six times after their initial creation. In my first article one said three upgrades, but in the new timeline we've jumped to as of this update Sept 2024, here they were upgraded six, included DNA from right finger Jehovah Anunnaki right finger human Elohim right finger Nibiruian and eight right finger earth rhesus monkey right finger earth soil by adding some earth soil into the in vitro mix this keyed that new species to this landmass on a quantum level even though they were not under formal contract to be here the new species could flourish in this atmosphere and procreate with each other to produce organically created earthling-like hybrids through sexual coupling. The players involved in the experiment would ultimately include Enki, Thoth and Ninhursag, among others I'm sure, but these are the main characters to my knowledge. 
As mentioned, Ninhursag was the only one who knew how to make the new species, then, attach, spirit essences into each new birth through geopositioning celestial timing and cellular frequency and sympathetic harmonic resonance between the new avatar and the crystal seed atom that stores a fractal of prime creator's personality and cellular memory that you refer to as your soul essence that would have been millions possibly billions of years advanced to anything the leviathans would have any knowledge of they were dragons from a much lower simulation known as nibiru not geneticists at least this is how i understand it the first experiment in the creation of Adam and Eve that yielded success at breathing Earth atmosphere would become known as the Thoth, Lilith drama, or, Herms, today. Of course that story has never actually been told accurately before. At least not in this era. More about Herms in PT2, along with the creation of, sexes, that now exist in the human Elohim saga so you can understand how this first attempt at the Hyksos creation went off the rails with Lilith and why. The Emerald Covenant, now more than 500 million years old, has been modified multiple times due to countless wars brought on by the Anahazi and their many minions brought here to keep the human Elohim from entering the interstellar communities. This has required new treaties and new avatars to enter the mix, all in the effort to save one group of lost, lost souls of Terra, after the other. It would take years just to give you a hyper-condensed synopsis of what has taken place. This is just the story of Adam and Eve and the 50 plus species of ETs that now walk among you that you take for being humans. One of these arrangements is known as the Co-Evolution Bio-Regenesis Treaty, designed by the Emerald Council, creators of the original Human Elohim Genetic Christos Blueprint. It required the avatars to no longer be androgynous, but would be split into two different sexes in order to speed up the process of evolving the distorted genetics of the people still here on the plane through cross-pollination and deliberate corruption of their DNA. Enter the, opposite sex. As mentioned, the human Elohim blueprint was originally androgynous, which means the Terra Earth simulation had been geared to support androgynous life forms, thus creating symbiosis of emotional response that is not overtly aggressive nor overtly emotional. A balance between both forever striving toward harmony. But after Terra Earth spent 250 meters years healing from the fall of Man War, she was finally able to support life forms again, and so the first rescue mission was put into place to extract all of those who had become disembodied. Both humans, as well as the various different species of Elohim that had warred against them understand it had already been one quarter of a billion years of disembodiment for all those lost, so time was of the essence to create the science that would work to offer them new avatars that all these different species could inhabit so they would be able to, master, out of this time matrix. The solution the genetic engineers back at Sirius B in the Emerald Alliance came up with was to split each lost spirit awareness into two bodies of different sexes, therefore more than doubling the speed of soul attenuation an ultra-complex, ultra-confusing scalar vibrational mechanics formula of placing spirit essences into, physical, form, and their being able to elevate their awarenesses in order to progress up through a 15-level time matrix. So instead of taking many thousands of years for the lost to return back into the interstellar communities living out life after life so their DNA could eventually repair its highly distorted form, now it would only take a fraction of this time. This first rescue mission also involved creating a whole separate, anti-particle, plane where the same awareness would also be split into two bodies there to speed up this process much faster yet, but that's not the subject of this topic, so I will leave that there. As an aside, many of the demons you are seeing suddenly appear that are raping and harming everyone in their paths today in 2024 are the people who were already resonating with the service to self-side prior to the full integration of anti-particle Terra's why in behavior portion of your spirit essence toward the end of 2017, at the midpoint of the current stellar activation cycle we're currently in, so they became much more aggressive with their selfish actions. At the same time, those who were resonating with service to others, Yang, are now becoming even more compassionate than they were prior because you're now moving forward with twice as much of your real self inside you, if that makes sense. Whichever side everyone were leaning in prior to the two planes integrating with each other is the side that will now be amplified. 
As this was explained to me by the keeper of the Terra Earth simulation, females are, whole, beings, XX, that can give birth, and certain chromosomes had to be removed from that template in order to create a, male, version of that form, XY, now missing one, leg, within the genetic chain. So now in order for the new avatar to procreate, the Orifim engineers invented complementary genitalia. Understanding all that noise about opposite sexes being the new ascension path out of this time matrix in a dramatically increased speed, now we get back to the creation of the new, earthling, in the garden, and what happened to the first Adam and Eve. In order to integrate all these various DNA templates together and enter into opposite sexes, I gather Ninhursag must have initially believed she would have to send two different spirit essences into the new creation so they could mate in order to procreate. Which she did, using a fractal of Thoth's awareness and a fractal of her own, which she would name Lilith. As I've said many times, the gods have many iterations of themselves here and are not just in one body, or even in just one male and one female form such as humans. They have the power to inhabit apparently as many avatars as they want to. Imagine managing all those other, yous, out there. No thanks. If I wouldn't have to personally suffer the pain, I'm pretty sure I'd kick my ass fairly often. Lilith wouldn't be the only additional iteration of Ninhursag in the garden drama. For the Adam and Eve creation she made four duplicates of herself to function as surrogates that could offer many wombs to speed up the gestation of the new earthling creation. They would all have pieces or parts of her awareness, thus each one would have slightly different personalities. Some would appear identical, some also do appear different. I know, because I've met with a handful of them at this point. So the being you call Eve, pronounced, Ava, according to her, was actually a group of five women all serving as surrogates and wet nurses as they processed the new species. And no, it wasn't for just Adam and Enki. They were also processing the pass through, ET's Ninhursag explained to me. We spoke about this more than once for clarity's sake. Her, Lilith, self was sent into the first new earthling creation, that was successful in that the creature lived, as the female essence, the other sex was played by a fractal of the awareness of Thoth, Hermes if I remember correctly. That first, successful, avatar turned out not as two different beings, one man and one womb man, but sharing one body with a female half and the opposite side a male half. These are known as Herms today, as mentioned in the first part of this two-part article, even though the experiment was not what she had intended. This defines more accurately the passage in the Freem at Sonic Bible program, of enslavement, male and female he created them, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Busts of Herms were set up as mile markers in ancient Greece in honor of the partial achievement that you can see even to this day. Herms are also known as the god known as Janus. As an aside, once Lilith became her own manifestation in this first dysfunctional test avatar, she tried to just leave this realm altogether, of course not using the bizarre Herm body, they can put any avatar into stasis and jump into any one of their skin suits, but was stopped at the four corners of the earth, which I take as meaning the entry points through the dome in the Antarctic shown on the maps now available through the Nose Confundin books. The ancient texts said she was met by great and terrifying monsters that guard the passageways. As an aside continued. The stories about Lilith eating children and all those negative strange tales were meant to vilify her for wanting to have nothing more to do with the project after that horrifying experience, but mostly for learning that she had been lied to by Enki what the Hyksos peoples were really going to be used for, as eternal slaves. She's still here today and in a very much female body. Like the many accounts of her lightness, which is not an exact copy of Ninhursag, she is as beautiful as the legends say. The Ninhursag exact copies are also very beautiful as well with different hair color. I will not be revealing more about them than that. Lilith's personality differs from Nin's, as she's still not happy with this plane or the people hybrids on it and spends her time around wildlife most of the time as I have seen personally. None of the stories you're told about the ancient past are ever accurate, as history is always written by the victors that paint themselves as heroes. Regardless of the consequences today we're experiencing from the Eden drama, 
the story of Eve and Lilith are wildly incorrect, deliberately written so and expounded on over the ages to discredit Ninhursag for taking sides against the Leviathans and the enslavement of her people. This may be the oldest smear campaign in written history. Eventually the experiment did work of course, and the brand new Hyksos species did succeed. But it would take two upgrades of the first Lulus to become compatible with humans, as delineated below. They were genetically created focusing on the size, strength of the Nephilim for gold mining purposes, so Adam, transliterated as Muhammad, and Eve, Avi, were recorded as being 90 feet tall in the Sahih Muslim. Book 040, number 6809. Seven races of six pointed star HYKSOS slaves genealogy right finger 1250 KBC first slave race. Lulcust, Locust, Lulus, created using Jehovah Anunnaki, some human Elohim, Nibiruian ape, Rhesus monkey, earth soil to create Homo neanderthalensis man. Now known as the highest of the priest class over all J3WS as the Kohanim, Kohans, Right finger 246 KBC Lulkist enters County Evolution Bioregenesis Treaty under Toth, Inki, CEBR. Right finger 2155 KBC First CEBR Race Upgrade. Luhari, Lucy, using Lulkist, and Hibornian Nephilim Human. Giants from Antiparticle Gaia. DNA creating Cro Magnon Man. Status today unknown at this time. Right finger 3152 KBC second CEBR race upgrade. Aluli Levi, Levitz, using Luhari and Urantria or tight human DNA. The first slave race that could procreate with human Elohim and also be bioformed by other invader races. These are now the servants within the priest class over the J3WS known as the Levant. Right finger 4151 BC 3rd CEBR race upgrade. Aluli Judah, Judah, using Aluli Levi and more human Elohim DNA creating modern day J3WS. Right finger 5148 KBC 4th CEBR race upgrade. Aluli Nephi, Neo, using Aluli Judah and more human Elohim DNA. Right finger 668 KBC 5th CEBR race upgrade. A new Melchizedek, using Aluli Nephi and Cloister Maharaji. Indigo, DNA creating Templar Melchizedeks. Group now led by Enoch. Right finger 7 10,500 BC 6th CEBR race upgrade. Super, race. Adam Cadman, Adam and Eve, using Alui Levi and human Elohim Maharaji. Indigo, Grail line DNA. Of the seven races of Hyksos Earthlings, these new hybrids possess clear abilities and genius IQ of the Maharaji Grail line indigos, known today as Sufis and at one time were the Whirling Dervish, famous for being able to levitate to around 50 feet high during performances. Although Adam and Eve were originally 90 feet tall, naturally, each time a Hyksos would interbreed with actual humans, they would reduce in height and look more and more like the human Elohim. The original creation was very much not human in appearance, even though they were also part human Elohim, and human Nephilim, because the Jehovah Anunnaki are aquatic apes, fish, and the Earth Rhesus and Nibiru apes are different versions of monkeys. Pass throughs 50 plus ETs birthing with the fully functioning Adam and Eve now breathing and alive, harmonically matched on a quantum and genetic level to enable them to procreate, and likely carrying the spirit essence awareness of Thoth in Adam and Ninhursag now going under the name of Avi, it was almost time for them to create a child. But before they could mate, Enki procreated with one of the five Aves, giving life to Cain, Cain, that would be the first Earth atmosphere blood lineage of Enki. They refer to this as the snake in the garden beguiling Eve, but in truth this was all planned out. The bloodline of Cain then yielded the race known as Canaan and had nothing to do with Adam. This would be the first direct, pass-through, process of giving off plain ETs a way to directly impregnate an AV mother via in vitro genetic splicing and intrauterine insemination IUI, and bring in their patrilineages directly into a human hybrid body. It had been Inky's plan all along to use this process to enable the offspring of each of the 50-plus ET races to then procreate with actual human women. 
which eventually they did. Today, all bipedal hominids are now in bioformed bodies that look very little like the original human Elohim that had been intended and in a very real sense can refer to Ninhursag as the creator of the image they have now. Chimeras the other Garden of Eden hybrid peoples came from gargoyles, totally real species, birds, fleas, frogs, horses, cows, goats, cats, wolves, dragons, dinosaurs, crocodiles, insects, moths, boars, lizards, crabs, lobsters, mermaids, beetles, octopi and on it goes that were given entrance into this atmosphere through the genetic base bipedal body of the Jehovah Anunnaki, just like Adam and Eve were based off of, as mentioned above. The Jehovah Anunnaki had been created by the Anahazi Yanez, Lionids, Elohim as a race of guards to keep the humans from ever getting out into the cosmos some 5.5 meters years ago the Jehovah were known as the Anu Avengers originally. These are described as, aquatic apes, or, fish people, briefly touched on above. As close as I can determine, the fish people have a reptilian genetic baseline code from Tiamat, the first animated avatar model that allowed fractals of prime creator to come into holographic manifest form. That original avatar type is known as aquatic dragons. So, while the hordes of invader races here were generally all different animals, shellfish, birds, gargoyles and insects, they are also all now reptilians at their underlying core. Which is why when the guy sent in the saliva of his pet lizard for his genealogy from 23andMe, it came back 51.3% Ashkin at ZJ3W. The Ashkin at Z are blue bloods because they are lizards, dragons. Each hybrid strain has also intermingled with most all other hybrids, leading to factions within factions within factions. It would be physically impossible to name them all with any accuracy. Like the Ashkin at ZJ3WS, the children of Cain, Cain with beak noses. They all believe theirs is the best chimera type. While animal, insect invader races have been here for 570 meters years, such as the Lionids, and scarab beetles known as the Kepri scarab kings of old as mentioned above. Most other insects and animals came in over the last 800,000 years from Nibiru as I gather it. And most of those consider the Jehovah Anunnaki that gave them their entry, collectively as the celestial gods, and their earthly god to be either Enki Lucifer the god over the animals, insects, or Enlil, who has sided with the Anahazi Elohim and Samjay's Pleiadian Anunnaki that run the time crafts in the upper skies. So when I say reptilians, I mean Enki, Marduk, Thoth, the Lucifer and Satin bloodlines. When I say the Samjay's Pleiadian Anunnaki, I am referring to the Enlil Horde, even though when he first arrived here, he was a dragon moth at the time. That's what this whole war over this world's landmass comes down to today. Elohim versus dragons. They are all totally psychopathic, because they are infected by nanites who are using all their bodies as surrogates, think the symbiotes of SG-1. Through these two main superpowers, the nanites can get all the, left, living beings to kill off all the other, right, living beings. They are behind both sides of all wars and always have been. You can see how absolutely bottom layer of swamp scum this has all become. And identifying the exact species who pulled off this bombing, or that do attack, is effectively impossible when both sides are really just one. The Budara Borgia retrovirus nanites. They are the real fake, God, and the real, Satan, and all things Antichrist, which means Antichristos, which is the base bloodline of the human Elohim that was the original target of the nanites to start with. Today, it is estimated between 50% and 70% of all beings on Earth today are Chimera invader race people of a vast cadre of varying abilities and appearances. Many of these use their advanced powers of holographic projection to make themselves appear like an everyday human. When the Nibiru looking glass Chimera reality simulation finally collapses, and it is expected to collapse soon, humans as well as many, many hybrids, will be shocked and terrified at who is who around them, akin to the movie they live. Those of very, pure, pass-through bloodlines can make their animal, insect hybrid form appear to look just like any other human on the street using their hologram. These beings all know who they are and are fully immersed in the siege against us.
Some chimeras have absolutely no idea what they are, or where they came from, as they become disconnected with the rest of the invaders and are unaware of how to use their projection powers. It is better that you prepare now for this rather than later, to give you time to research this topic so you are more emotionally ready to see what is set to unfold before this is all over, as the Nibiru Beyond the Looking Glass Chimera Reality Simulation, Chimera Reality for short, is coming down even as we speak. You can test this for yourself. Step outside at night when you see a crescent moon in the sky. If you're wearing glasses, take them off and look at it. If your cellular frequency is following Terra's ascent to the next dimensions, then you will see three or even four moons nested on top of each other. Try it for yourself to see if I'm making all of this up. As always, keep in mind. 1. This is a holographic simulation, you are not really here. 2. You are an eternal being, whether you are an invader race or human. You will never die. 3. This is not the end of anything other than one half B years of continuous enslavement. 4. Your next destination, if you vibrate in true benevolence and compassion, will be greater than any example I can give you that comes from this prison environment you've called home for roughly half a meter life cycles hang in there and keep sharing the hard red pills to wake everyone up. We're here now and not going home empty-handed. We pledge to give you back your freedom, and we are not alone.